Hey, what's happening guys? I'm going to try and answer a question and we're going to talk about transistors today. So the question I got was how does a transistor behave as an amplifier? I guess to do that, we need to talk about the modes that transistors operate in, also known as regions. And we have cutoff as our first region. And we're going to be talking about, in this case, NPN bipolar junction transformers. Okay? We're not going to be talking about MOSFETs or PMPs or anything like that today. So, we can take just about any fast switching, low current NPN transistor. And we have our collector, our emitter, and our base. So if you have absolutely no understanding of transistors whatsoever, I'm just going to give you a, a simple overview to help you understand. The collector generally connects to VCC through whatever it is we're trying to power. And we'll get to that in a minute. The emitter connects to ground. And the base is where we're going to get a signal. So nothing can flow here through the collector emitter junction unless we give it a nudge through the base. So in the cutoff region, the transistor in itself is acting like an open switch. There is zero base current, zero collector current, and zero emitter current. That is the cutoff region. Next, we have what's called saturation. So in our saturation mode, we are applying a current at the base our collector is, of course, attached to VCC through whatever device we're using. And our emitter is going to ground. And in this case, we have provided a high enough current through the base that we have completely opened up this junction here, the collector to emitter junction. And it now simply behaves as a short. So these are the two modes in which the transistor acts as a switch. Cutoff where this acts as an open, no current passes. Saturation, where this acts as a short, and we have maximum collector current, maximum emitter current, and the maximum base current. All right? So now we have the third region, which is called the linear region. And in this case, I don't know why I drew that backwards that time. In this case, we have a small varying current at the base, which creates a larger varying current through the collector to emitter junction. That's how it works as an amplifier. The current that comes in here is amplified a number of times. And you can find that in the data sheet for whatever transistor you're looking at. I like to think of it like this. 
In the early days of medicine, the first suction devices were created by using falling water, creating a vacuum. You know, you had a pipe here with water flowing downhill by gravity, basically. And what they would do is they would just branch off of it. And then this became your suction port. That falling water created a vacuum which pulled whatever they needed to remove from your body through there. So it's kind of the same way. That small current that we're putting into the base is creating a larger thing here. It's creating a, almost like a Venturi effect of electrons that are coming through. One of the things that you'll hear battered around with bipolar junction transistors, also MOSFETs, is bias. And when we're talking about bias in a general term, we're talking about adding some resistors to control the behavior of the transistor. But there's another way to talk about it, and that is to talk about biasing the individual junctions, the silicon junctions within the transistor. So here we have our three regions, saturation region, linear region, and cutoff region. So if we say that something is forward biased, we are going to apply a positive voltage to the p-type. And if we say something is reverse uh, biased, then we are going to apply a positive voltage to the n-type. And by using these two things, forward and reverse bias, we can set up a truth table of how the transistor will behave. So, <laughs> Paul, you big dummy. Uh, nothing like a 45-year-old eraser. <laughs> so this is our emitter junction. This is our collector junction. What's the junction with? Well, it's with the base. This is our saturation region, our linear region, and our cutoff region. So in the saturation region, both the emitter and the collector are forward biased. So, of course, we have VCC here. Then we have our input signal here. Both are forward biased. We are in the saturation region. We are completely open. Now, when we get to the linear region, our emitter junction is now forward biased, while our collector junction is reverse biased. And now, our small signal here yields a corresponding larger signal here. And in the cutoff region, we reverse bias both of these. Negative voltage here, negative voltage here, nothing happens. It acts as a standard switch. Now the astute among you might be saying to yourself, but Paul, isn't there an inverse linear region? Why, yes. Yes, there is. And if you reverse bias your emitter and forward bias your collector, you'll end up in that region where nothing really good happens. But it is, an act, it is a legitimate region of the transistor. So just remember, by forward biasing your emitter in here, and reverse biasing this, which simply means that the voltage is flowing, or the current is flowing in this direction. We get that linear region of the transistor, and it is able to take a small signal and make it into a large signal. I hope this helped. I hope you understand. If you did, give me a thumbs up while my pencil rolls off. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with some of your friends if you think they'd enjoy it. That's it.
I'm out. Peace.